Okay, so most of the software, MAMP or WAMP or whatever, ZAMP, um, there's some sort of screen like this, control panel. So at this final screen here, I'll click finish. In my case here, what language? I'll just go with English. And we get this software. So, or this control panel. It looks pretty complex and scary. All that we need to care about is to activate two buttons. Here we have a row of Apache and a row of MySQL. And on here we have the action to start. Click start for both of these first two ones on the Apache and MySQL row. Click the first one. You'll see here that it went from gray to yellow to green. And then when I click the second one, MySQL, goes yellow to green. So if you've got both of these green, you're good. Did everyone get green? Yes. Okay. So I'll make some more notes here. I'll jump down to the big idea of virtual hosts. So virtual host steps. Uh, download, install the software. And the software is either ZAMP or MAMP. Those are the two I'm going to recommend. I, I don't recommend WAMP anymore. So either of those two. Download and install with defaults. So all of that next, next, next part that we did, just defaults is fine. OK, that's check. After that, start the software and turn on the Apache and MySQL, MySQL services. So what did this call it? Services? Some of them call it slightly different things. Modules. This called it service modules. modules, yes. So some might call it a service, some might call it a module. It's just a, a mini part of the app. Start the software, turn those two things on. Then we have install, or no, we have create. This is our next step. Create a database via phpMyAdmin. We'll do that in a moment. And then install WordPress. When you buy the service over at GoDaddy or Bluehost or wherever, it's usually you click the buy and all of this happens behind the scenes. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for the service to have a server, to have the domain name, to have this database stuff, to have WordPress ready to go. Because in this class, obviously, I'm not going to ask you, hey, let's all take out our credit cards and go buy this. We're doing it all for free. And so we have a little bit of a setup. We've got one of them done. We installed it. We, inst we activated these features. Next, we need a database. WordPress is complex software behind the scenes that is residing on top of a database. Anyone have an opinion? What's a database? A base of data, obviously. A collection of data. Data such as how many products do you have? What colors of that shirt do you have? Even basic things. What's, uh, what's, your, what's the file of the image of your company? Even basic than that. What are the accounts that are in your website? So every piece of information about your website and how it functions is in a database, in a collection of data. It's a sort of a special file on the server that is storing everything about your website, people's passwords, home addresses, so all of the data of your website. So we need to create a website so that we can install WordPress into your database. One more step above here. Access your virtual website at this link in any web browser, I guess not Edge, in any web browser, we need to go to this link. Notice it's not whatever.com. It's not .com, .biz, .whatever. It's not on the real internet. A real web address has that ending part, doesn't it? victorsbakery.com, amazingwebdesigns.biz, you know, san diego.org sdce.edu. 
there is no dot extension part of it, that's your indicator that it's not on the real internet. Access your virtual website, sort of like control panel, at that link. At that link, then, we will create a database, and then we will be able to install WordPress, and then we will be able to use WordPress. So because these classes are free and we don't ask students to have any pre-prep and such, the nature of these classes, I would love it that when people come into this class, they have a website. They have it already on Bluehost or whatever. I would love that. Then we're just ready to go. But obviously, for public classes, for free classes, people come in at different levels. People don't want to pay yet until they learn how it works. So we have a little bit of a setup, but ultimately it's to use WordPress. Let's do this part here. On your web browser, let's go to the link, the web address, http colon slash slash localhost. Okay, after we activate Apache, MySQL, we're supposed to put something else? Nope, as long as you activated those two, you're good. Then in your web browser, we will go to the, to the web address, http colon slash slash localhost. Sometimes as you're typing this stuff, it pops up with suggestions here. Just ignore those. Those are often to go search. We don't want results. We want to actually just go to this link. So just type that link exactly like that and press Enter. Ignore any pop-up that you get here. Type it, press Enter. That then goes to a screen that looks like this. This is the ZAMP, Apache, etc. Welcome to ZAMP. Did everyone get that? Welcome to ZAMP? Yep. So if we see this, the virtual server is running. If we don't see this, maybe you misspelled the, the address up here. Maybe, maybe ZAMP is not running both of these little modules. Okay, so access your virtual website here. Create a database via phpMyAdmin. What do you think we do next? Go to phpMyAdmin. Right there, at the top right corner, we go to phpMyAdmin to create the database. So at the top right corner, click on that, phpMyAdmin. This looks a like a pretty scary screen. And it is. This is a place where we manage the database. This is where we could accidentally, you know, click on the database of my website and click delete. And it would delete everything about your website and all of your products and all of your sales and all of that. So you don't really do too much on this screen. If you buy like one of these accounts at a real at a service provider, if you pay for that $45 a month at you know WordPress.com, you never have to do any of this. But we have to do it just because we, you know, we don't have that paid thing. And so right here, I want to create a new database. You've never seen this screen before, but where do you think you click? Database. One of two places. We go to databases, or we click New Database. Whichever one you click on, it goes to the same place. So I'm going to click here, Databases. Then you get a screen here, Create a Database. We give it a name, and then we Create. We can call these databases anything we want. The user, your visitors, will never see this. This is never user-facing. I'm just going to call it WordPress. The thing, however, is whatever you named this, make a note of it, because we're going to need this info on the next screen. And if you called this WordPress with capital letters, when we need it in a moment, uh, you have to type it the same way that you wrote it here. And obviously, if you forgot what you called it, you can go back to the screen. But to make it very easy, this database, call it WordPress, all lowercase, no spaces, just simple WordPress. For the notes, create a database via phpMyAdmin. So that's going over to localhost. actually slash php my admin ultimately and then new and then create 
database name. That's what we're doing right now. By clicking the link on the top right, it just goes to that address. And we're in the new screen, and we're creating a database name. Click Create. You should get a little yellow message for a moment, and then I guess it just jumps over to, in my case at least, I created it, and then it jumped over to, okay, here's your database. Do you now have a new entry here that you didn't before? Yes. Anyone have any trouble? Okay, so one database per website, basically. But I can create 10 different websites. With XAMPP, I can create 10 different websites to try different things, to learn the software, to make mistakes on one site, and then apply my knowledge to the other site. They just all need, however, their own database. And I can call it WP1, WP2, WP10. I can call it Victor's Bakery. I can call it Janet's uh, Realty. I can call it whatever I want, and each database will be for a separate site. But they all will be under the same... Software. Okay. There, this software right here is the database management software. And then all the websites have their own database and they're all just managed from this screen. And they're all independent from each other too. Next, okay, install WordPress onto your database. The way this will work is copy the WordPress folder, which is the software, to the to the proper folder, which I'll show you in a moment. There's a special folder called htdocs which is inside of the folder where XAMPP got installed into, which is on the C drive on the computer. So we're going to copy the WordPress software, which I have ready for you. We're going to copy it into this certain folder. After that, we're going to go to localhost slash WordPress on the web browser. And then there'll be a quick little process of install the software, create the user account, the, ad, the admin account, and then we have WordPress. So the next step here. We're going to copy this folder into this folder. Let me show you first, then we'll do it together. Just let me show you first. And the one you prepared, it is just a downloaded version, or you update it? It's, the, it's a downloaded version from five months ago. So it'll probably need an update, but we'll get to that. But it's not customized. It's not customized. It's the it's straight from WordPress.org. Okay, so let me show you first, and then we'll do it. I've already got in this PC, in local disk C, I've already got the WordPress software. So again, let me show you. I'm going to copy that, right-click copy, and we've got a folder, XAMPP. In that folder, we have htdocs. And then we're going to paste it here. So let me back up to show you that. That's what we need to do. That's what I mean by this step here. If you, if you needed to do this at home, well, you don't have that folder yet. So perhaps a step zero here. Get it at WordPress.org. I already have the WordPress software downloaded ready for us to use. If you need the software, most likely you will, you're going to go to WordPress.org and click the download button. But I've got it for you ready. So in my, on these computers, we will find the, the downloaded folder over here. Minimize all your windows to go see your desktop. So would you do that before you started all this? At any point, you're going to need the software. So perhaps, sure, if you want to, when you download XAMPP, you could have also gone over to WordPress.org and downloaded that too, because you're going to need these two pieces of software. So at any point, we're fine here that we're doing it after one, as long as we get the software and put it in the right place. OK, so we are going to go to this PC, top left corner. 
the local disk C drive where everything is installed on these computers, on your computer, on a Windows computer. Double click local disk. You're going to see a folder called WordPress. I want to copy this folder, so do a right click and then copy. And then double click the XAMPP folder. Double click it to open it. Then, when you're in the XAMPP folder, double click to open htdocs. There's lots of folders for you to ignore. The only one that matters is htdocs. Double click that one. And then, on an empty spot here, just right click and paste. So, on an empty spot here, right click, paste. So you can make multiple websites in XAMPP or MAMP or whatever. They all have some sort of htdocs folder. Um, and you can make multiple websites. They just have to be in their own folder. So I just pasted in the WordPress software. So I have a, I have a website. I have one website, WordPress, but I can easily in an advanced way. I don't do this, but I could create a new folder and call this my site too. And then inside of that folder could be a completely separate site. I can have as many websites running inside of my XAMPP software. They're just separated by different folders. Okay, so you, you want to separate them, right? You need to separate them, to yes. Uh, you can't put the yeah, uh, they, two separate websites have a lot of the same files, and so if you try to combine the folder, one file is going to erase another file. So they need to be separate folders so that they're separate sites, so that the software can differentiate them. Did everyone get that WordPress folder copied into the htdocs folder? My next step. We need to we need to launch the software now. In your web browser, you're going to go again to your virtual server link, localhost, slash, forward slash, WordPress. So this address here is based on the folder in htdocs. My folder is currently called WordPress. If my folder was called WP, to access that website, my link would be localhost slash WP. So whatever the name of the folder where your site is, is going to be here. That's always the same because you're, you're using XAMPP, the virtual server, and then the name of the website. No, it should all use the same port, but it can differentiate which site is which site. So if I had a different site, if I had my site, Two. I have two different sites, my site and WordPress. Well, if I want to access that other site, go host slash my site too, exactly as it's spelled in the folder. So the name of the folder in htdocs is the ending of your URL. They all start with that localhost part, and then they end with the separate folder name. Back to my web browser. Back to my web browser. I'm going to go to localhost slash WordPress, the name of my folder, then press enter. I'm using the same browser, but you can open a new tab, new window, whatever you want. We just need to go back to the, any web browser and type the address. Uh, new folder is it empty? Yes, uh, I was just showing here that if I say new folder, it's a completely empty folder. So if I wanted a different WordPress site, I would need to copy again the WordPress folder. That folder that you downloaded, I would need to copy it. Now obviously this one's already called WordPress. And if I just copy another WordPress folder into the same folder, they're going to merge if they don't want. So 
if I call this WordPress 1 and then copied in a new one, WordPress, there's no conflict. So you just need to, that's why I copied it. If you want to make another site later, if you move the original file, we're about to make changes to the software. So you need a fresh copy of WordPress. So um, the example of that one, it's just empty if I want to make a Dreamweaver site, for example. But to make another WordPress site, I need the whole original folder, copy it in, but it has a different name as any other site that already exists. OK, so I go to localhost slash WordPress. And then here will be now finally a little bit of a friendly process. This other stuff that we did was actually very advanced. Um, if you got the other stuff to work to create the database and so forth, can you raise your hand? How many of you created the database uh, and all of that? OK, very good. Pat yourself on the back. You are a database administrator now. So that's a very advanced thing to do using PHP my uh, PHP my admin to make databases, and almost no one has to ever do it. If you go buy this at Bluehost, GoDaddy, whatever, all of that's done for you. You're just going to get here's your WordPress site. But because of the nature of this class, we have to do some of that, and it's not too complex. Yes, there's a few steps. I'm making the notes. I'm recording the video, so you'll be able to replay it and do it again yourself. Question. Would, would you advise um, having that control? Instead of saying you handle that, you get more control by doing it yourself and not. No, I wouldn't. You don't gain too much. Um, do you mean like if you buy the Bluehost account and then you set up the database and so forth? Yeah. Not really. Um, ultimately, you end up with a WordPress website, and if you all do it, if you do it yourself, you see more of the nuts and bolts of it, but there's not too much of a value to that. Because ultimately, you're only really going to now use this part of the, the control panel of WordPress. Yeah. So this, a lot of this will be kind of straightforward. Pick whatever language you want your control panel interface to be in. I'm going to pick the default. Continue. This says, in order to fully install WordPress, you need the, um, the name of the database. Check. A moment ago, we created a database called WordPress. We need the login information, user and password. I'll tell you what those are, but those come, to, those come from, from XAMPP. It'll tell you what that is. What's the host? Well, if it was on the real internet, victorsbakery.com, but because we're on our own virtual service, it's localhost. And then this fifth one, don't worry about the fifth one. But we'll click Let's Go. Now, it's not that it knew that you created a database called WordPress and it auto-populated it. It's just that's the default. So when I was on the PHP My Admin screen and I created a database called My Site, you know, I need to type the name of the database that I created a moment ago. But because I asked all of us, let's just create a database called WordPress, then we save us, ourselves a step. But when you create a second uh, site and you call it WordPress 2, the folder, and you call the database WordPress 2, this name is going to need to be WordPress 2. And I just realized the username and password for that. I will confirm it right over here. It's probably. <coughs> Let me check one thing here. It's probably root. Let me confirm. it's this but I just realized that so let me just confirm this okay yes so the um, then the username and password this is gonna be root with a password that is empty nothing there this is another reminder that right now we're working on a virtual server it's not on the real internet if your database had no password on the real internet you're going to get hacked in 10 seconds. But this is just internally, offline, in our virtual server that no one will access except you sitting at your computer. This is what you fill in here. Database name will vary as you make different sites, but it'll always be root plus empty password. Uh, don't press a space. Technically, that's not empty. A space is something. A space is not nothing. A space is something. So make sure it's totally empty there. So, so you mean like, the username is going to be the same? 
the username will always be the same, yes, when we use XAMPP. Yes. If you create a second site, can you use the same database? You could, but then you get to the advanced part about how each one needs its own table prefix. WP1, WP2, WP3. So I would not recommend using the same database because it's very easy to jumble up all your data or to install it wrong. And um, the, uh, XAMPP and, and this software makes it very easy to just create multiple databases and separate it and not cause any issues. So I would just recommend keep every website with their own database. So name of the database, name of the name of the user to access the database, password is nothing, localhost is localhost, we're not on the real internet. If I was on the real internet, that would be Victor's bakery.com, right? What is the what is the where is the database at online? This is not online, it's offline on localhost. And then table prefix, if you were doing multiple sites, which I don't recommend, each one needs its own prefix so that the data doesn't get jumbled up. Submit. Is username and password standard? In XAMPP. In XAMPP, yes. Root and no password, that's standard in XAMPP, yes. If you were doing this manually in um, on GoDaddy or whatever, you, you would then have something different. Now, I already clicked on that, so I'm just doing install, and that again, I guess. Oh, here we go. Um, I have to check really fast, so mine's slightly different. What do you see now after you click that? Yeah, okay, click that run installation, where's it all set, Sparky? Yep, click that, and then we get to my screen. So, using database host would be domain name? In real? in real life, most likely, that it would be the domain name of where your website, of where your database exists on a server. Starting with HTTP or www? Mm, that's a good point. Um, with nothing, just the actual domain name, because often you access the database at a different port, so you don't want to specify. Just the way you access it on the internet. Yes. I saw a hand over here, maybe, for a moment. Anyone? Okay, so here now, actually let's write some notes here, um, installing it, okay, um, once you go to the WordPress setup software, um, follow the setup wizard to install the software, note, database name, is the name of your database that you created. The, the user is root, lowercase, always the same in XAMPP. Password is nothing. Empty, how, how else can I say it? Blank, but not literally the word nothing, right? Nothing, and it's empty, but not literally the word empty. It's nothing, invisible. Nada. Nada, so zilch. Um, there's nothing in that field. And then the other one about uh, hosting, you just leave it as is. And then the one of table prefix, leave it alone as well. So. The table, table, whatever it was called, the last two ones. There was, um, was it hosting? What's that? WP. Yeah, but you just leave it, leave it as is. So I think there was hosting and table prefix, the the last two ones. Default. Just leave those alone. Let me click next to create the admin account. That's the screen we're at right now. Now here is the part where we can set things up how we want. This other stuff is kind of boilerplate. It's, it's kind of what you have to do, these steps we just did. But now you can create, what's the name of my website? What's my email address that I'm going to use to log in 
to to use WordPress what's the name of my admin account and such so in this next screen here you can set this up how you want and now this is the part where you please write down your password because I will not know your password to log back into it if you misspelled your own password site title whatever you want here Victor's Bakery. I always use the example of Victor's Bakery when I teach these classes. Fictional business that sells cookies and cupcakes and birthday cakes, whatever. Victor's Bakery. So this is the name of your site that is going to appear uh, on, on your website, but it's not victorsbakery.com. That doesn't really relate to that. My website could be victor.com, but this is the text <coughs> that will appear or the logo that will appear on your site, which you can edit any of this later. But right now we're setting it up for the first time. What is the, the name that I'm going to use when I log in to manage my site? This could be anything you want. I could, I could call it Victor. I could call it anything. I'm going to keep it very simple and just say admin. Admin is the name that I'm going to use to log in with. However, I will make a note here. So site title you want what the what your site is called username I'm gonna add admin but don't use admin in real life admin is the common one that the hackers are gonna try to log in with first for this class I'm using a bad username just so that everyone sees what I did but in real life if I set this up I would want something better um, you know maybe something like Vic admin that's gonna be harder for the hackers to guess first of all they need to know who is the name the main administrators name and I'm using you know a shorthand nickname and then admin so that I can remember it if I call my admin Victor because no one's gonna figure that out oh wait this is Victor's bakery isn't it so whatever Victor admin whatever username is more secure this is the about the question earlier is my site secure yes it's secure if you bought the SSL etc but it's not secure if you call your login admin or these sort of like well-known ways to get hacked which is the same thing with password in this class for this demo my password will be password which is the worst password ever but in real life I'm gonna do like you know password like that and like that I'm gonna try to make it more secure but I'm not gonna remember that when we come back next week so I'm gonna just call this something completely simple create a strong password for security this is the other aspect of I can have as much protection that I buy at these companies but I still need to practice my own good cybersecurity and like I said if you're using the same password for your bank and your college and your <coughs> e-commerce site and one of those gets hacked all of your sites could get hacked because they all have the same password now one of the most secure passwords is this one but I'm never gonna remember that and then I'm gonna have to write it down and pin it next to my monitor and that's not secure <laughs> so I'm gonna change that to whatever password I want which will tell me it's terrible and I'll have to say confirm this terrible password which all of this can be changed later but just for right now so I remember I teach too many classes to remember one more thing so I'm just gonna call this simple admin password put in your email it could be real it could be fake And so I'll be able to log in either with the admin or the email address and then the password. And if I forgot my password, this is for me to retrieve the password. That's very common on many websites, right? I forgot my, my email to my, I mean, I forgot my password to my bank. I can retrieve it with my email. This final check mark here does not really matter, but notice what it says. Discourage search engines from indexing or finding this site. If this site were being set up on the real internet, it would be live for anyone to visit, and it would be live for Google or Yahoo or Bing or AOL to find it. 
but I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready to sell my products. I don't want people to Google it and find it. I could turn that on to say, uh, don't let me get found by the search engines, but it says in small text, it's up to the search engine to honor this. And the big search engines like Google and Bing and Yahoo, they do. Some of these other smaller search engines, maybe shadier ones, don't. For our purposes of this class, it doesn't matter. It's not even on the internet. The search engines cannot find this website. It doesn't exist on the internet. But if I'm working on my site on the live internet, I might turn that on so that I don't get found and get traffic. But then I have to remember to turn it off when my site really is live, or it's like, why don't I get traffic? My website's amazing. So um, There's going to be a screen in the settings screen where we can change all of this again, and you can turn that off. And I'll show you where that is. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm just going to leave it, because we're working offline. Finally, install. If it asks for password saver or such, you can if you want, doesn't matter. Wait for this to keep processing it, it's still thinking, so just wait a moment. Hopefully you should get success. If you don't, we're coming to a break in a moment. You should get success, click log in, and now go ahead and log in with the credentials you just made up. Mine is admin and password, I don't know what yours is, I wasn't looking at your screen. Go ahead and sign in with what you just made up, not the root thing that only matters when we're installing into the database. Now what matters is what you made up here. You're never going to need to know that root blank password except when you install it for the first time. But now you're going to need to know this admin plus your password. Click login, and if you see this WordPress dashboard, welcome to WordPress. You got it. How many of you see the welcome to WordPress? Okay, great. Take your hand, pat yourself on the back. You're a WordPress admin. Let's take our second break. It's 11.35. We'll take a break until 11.45. If it didn't work, call us over. We need it to work up to this point before we proceed. So we'll be back at 11.45, and we'll start using WordPress.